Good morning, good afternoon, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to the virtual yoga studio. We'll get started in a few minutes. For today, um, here are my suggestions in terms of props. And as always, we're practicing at home. We're in the era of adaptation. So I invite you to be creative if you don't have access to the traditional props, but it will serve you well if you have props that resemble two yoga blocks or thick hardcover books, a strap, a piece of rope, a belt, even if it's the type of belt or rope that you tie around a robe or just a long piece of rope that you have in your house. And then finally, I have back here a folding chair or really any kind of chair. So look around your room, around your house, take a couple of minutes. So welcome, I know that everybody is getting settled. Please unfold your mat or your towel, whatever it is that you'll be practicing it on today. Um, in terms of props, it's gonna be helpful if you have access to two yoga blocks or bricks as they're sometimes called or thick hardcover books or anything that has just about this kind of height. Um, and it will be helpful if you have two of them. That's number one. Number two is access to a belt or a strap or a long piece of rope. And then third is access to a folding chair or really any kind of chair that's easy to move around. We'll use that towards the end of the practice. So you can have it off to the side for now. I am going to go ahead and get started. I hope that everybody is doing well. Um, Shabbat Shalom, happy Saturday, happy springtime as we move forward. Um, and welcome to Open Temple's virtual yoga studio. My name is Zach Lasker. I have the honor of being both um, Open Temple's executive director by day and kind of six days a week. And then on Shabbat, I have the absolute pleasure and delight of being our resident yoga instructor. Um, and it's great to see so many familiar faces and I think even a couple of new ones. Um, we are um, in the Jewish tradition towards the tail end of the Passover holiday. And last week at this time and in this space, um, I led everybody through a practice that physically emphasized hip openers and sprinkled along the way were various Easter eggs or as I so wittingly term them, term them Passover eggs, um, little clues and references to the various rituals and highlight points of the traditional Passover Seder. Uh, I, I think it was amusing. I hope it was amusing and that people took a lot out of it. And there was a request towards the end that we repeat a similar practice this week. So um, here's what we're going to do. I am going to lead us through a similar, not identical um, physical practice, but this week we are not searching for those hidden Passover eggs. This week is really about time and space for you to turn your gaze inward and do some self-reflection around this idea of opening. So as I shared last week, um, in the tradition of Judaism, Passover is this recollection. We, we really take ourselves back in time and simulate the exodus out of Egypt. And the Hebrew word for Egypt is Mitzrayim. And when you break down that word in Hebrew, um, you have me, the first part of the word Mitzrayim, which means from, and tsar or tsraim is a space of narrowness. And it's this acknowledgement that we are moving forward from a, a sense of narrowness and into, God willing, a space of expansion, an opening. And I wanna share with you um, the words of a Jewish educator named Leslie Koppelman Ross um, and what she has to say about this idea of expansion and exodus and how it might relate to our yoga practice as a way to set an intention. So please sit in Sukhasana, sit with one shin in front of the other. This is a great way to use a block. If you have compression in your lower back, you can sit up on a block. 
It's a good way to create space. And here is what Leslie has to say. The Haggadah instructs that each of us in every generation is actually supposed to feel as though we had been slaves and made the transition to a new status. How can we do this? Take ancient history and make it into my story and your story. We who live in an open democratic society tend to think of ourselves as free but are we really just because we are not physically bound to an overlord? What do being enslaved and unencumbered by oppression really mean? Each of us lives in his or her or their own Mitzrayim, the external or physical narrow straits of financial or health constraints or perhaps personal tra tragedy. Like the duality in virtually all of Passover symbols, they work in two ways. They turn us into both slaves and oppressors of ourselves and others. Passover leads us to question the values and attitudes we hold and which hold us to those roles. When we get rid of leaven, the ingredients that make things rise and replace it with matzah, we are supposed to confront whatever it is that we normally allow to persist in our lives, but which should perhaps, like the leaven, be eliminated, and that which we suppress, which should, like the back to basics unleavened bread, be admitted. So my question as we start this yoga practice for you to consider and hold dear as we navigate through this sequence or order together, is what opening do you aspire to create in your mind, body, and soul? What opening do you aspire to create in your mind, body, and soul? Take a breath in and let it out. Do that two more times together. Inhale through your nose. Exhale out your mouth. And one last time, inhale. And a lion's breath, a very audible exhale. And so we begin. Come off your block if you were sitting up on one. Have your blocks next to you, kind of aligned with your hips. Have access to your belt or strap. Bend your knees, plant your feet firmly on the ground and start to roll down onto your back. Walk your feet in, extend your arms alongside your torso, and walk your feet in close enough to your tush so that your heels touch your fingers. And then draw your right knee into your chest. And inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. And again, inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Inhale, draw your right knee closer to your right armpit. And exhale. And now take your strap or belt, loop it around the ball of your right foot, extend your right leg up towards the ceiling, and start to walk your hands up the strap or belt, but keep your shoulder blades melted onto the mat. And if for some reason you don't have a belt or a strap, no big deal, just interlace your fingers around the back of your thigh. And those of you who want to deepen this stretch, 
Start to extend your left leg towards the front of the room. And inhale. And exhale. And if your left leg is extending, flex your left foot so that your left toes point up towards the ceiling and rotate the inner part of your left thigh down towards the ground to help you straighten that left leg. And those of you practicing with a belt or strap, take both ends into your right hand. But before you do that, take the block on the right side of your body, lower it to the lower level, the lowest level, and hug it right next to your right hip. And then take both ends of the strap into your right hand, extend your left arm out to the left, and then draw your right leg over to the right side of the room. And that block on your right side is gonna provide some support. So you want the outer part of your upper right leg to rest on that block. And you are in Supta Padangustasana, a reclined hand to foot extension pose. Turn your gaze out to the left and three cycles of breath. And through this pose, we're beginning to open up our right hip, creating that opening. Take one more inhale through your nose. And as you exhale, start to bring your right leg back up towards the ceiling. Just to counter that pose, take both ends of the strap into your left hand, release your right hand, and draw your right foot over to the left. It's only going to come a bit of the way. And with your next exhale, right foot back up to the ceiling, left hand on the left side of the strap, right hand on the right side of the strap. If your left leg is extended forward, bend your left knee, plant your left foot on the ground, start to bend your right knee, remove the strap, right foot on the ground parallel to the left foot. Just put the strap on your chest and take one cycle of breath. And second side, start to lift your right foot up, excuse me, draw your right, your, your left knee, pardon my mistake, draw your left knee into your chest. Let's take a couple cycles of breath just like this. With your next inhale, draw your left knee closer to your left armpit. And now release the interlace of your fingers around your left knee. Take your belt or strap, loop it over the ball of your left foot and extend your left leg up towards the ceiling. Imagine that you could stamp that left foot onto the ceiling. And those of you that are going to keep your right knee bent, just draw it in towards the midline. Don't let your right foot flop open, make sure all four sides of your foot are planted firmly on the ground. If you are extending your right leg forward to deepen the intensity of the stretch, now is a good time to do that. Flex your right foot so that your toes point up towards the ceiling. Imagine that you could stamp that right foot on the wall in front of you.
And then if you're practicing with a strap, both ends of the strap into your left hand, hug your block on the left hand side of your body or book next to your left hip. And then with both ends of the strap in your left hand, extend your right arm out to the right and then draw your left leg over to the left side of the room. Let the outer part of your upper left leg rest on that block. And then turn your gaze out over your right arm. Spin the inner part of your right thigh down towards the ground to help you straighten that right leg. And observe the opening in the left hip. With your next exhale, bring your left leg back up towards the ceiling. Take both ends of the strap into your right hand. Let your left arm release. And then just draw your left foot over towards the right, just a bit to counter the stretch that you just took. And then with your next exhale, left foot up towards the ceiling, left hand on the left side of the strap, right hand on the right side of the strap. If your right leg is extended straight, bend your right knee, plant your foot on the ground, and then everyone start to bend your left knee, remove the strap, put the strap off to the side, left foot comes onto the ground, and you can move the blocks off to the side. And let's take a reclined thread the needle, figure four. Draw your right knee into your chest. And then stack your right ankle on top of your left knee. Start to draw your left thigh into your chest. Interlace your fingers either around your left thigh or for a deeper stretch around your left shin. And then inhale, use your right elbow to press into your right thigh towards the front of the room while you simultaneously draw your left thigh closer into your chest. So these are opposing actions. You're drawing your left thigh in closer while pushing your right thigh out. That's what's gonna help you create the stretch that opens your right hip. All the while continuing that slow and steady cycle of breath. Just observe that opening in the right side of your hip. And then with your next exhale, release the interlace of your fingers. Plant your left foot on the ground. Take your right ankle on off of your left knee and right foot comes on the ground. Second side, draw your left knee into your chest and then stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Interlace your fingers around your right thigh or around your right shin, depending on the intensity that you'd like. You are in the pilot seat for your yoga practice. So you're making choices that serve you well. And just like before, you're using your 
left elbow to press your left thigh forward as you draw your right knee closer into your chest. Few cycles of breath. And then with your next exhale, release the interlace of your fingers, lower your right foot down towards the ground, take your left ankle off of your right knee, and then draw both knees into your chest, and just rotate, shift along your hips from right to left and left to right. Massaging your lower back, releasing your spine. And then switch the direction of your momentum so that you're rocking forward and back, forward and back, building up some of the momentum until you can rock yourself up into a seated position. And then press the soles of your feet together. Your legs are kind of in a diamond shape. Take hold of your feet, open up your feet so that you can see the very lovely, I'm sure scrubbed squeaky clean bottom of your feet. And we're gonna come into Supta, excuse me, into Baddha Konasana. So start to lower your torso towards your feet. You might stop a third of the way, halfway, or depending on your flexibility, you might come close to all the way down, planting your upper, excuse me, your forearms onto the ground. Focusing on that slow and steady cycle of breath. And then walk your hands back in and stack your right knee on top of your left knee. Hug your heels close to your hips. And then start to walk your hands forward again. Lowering onto your forearms or just walking your hands out. And then walk your hands back in. Let's come into Gomukhasana. So let's combine this hip opening with a bit of a heart opener. Arms out into a T position. Take your left arm up. Bend your left elbow. Left hand comes to your upper back. And then sweep your right arm down and around and either interlace your fingers or just use your left hand to grab onto the upper portion of your left shirt, of, of your shirt, and your right hand to grab onto the bottom portion of your shirt. 
hug your left elbow in towards your head and inhale and exhale and inhale and exhale. And as you inhale, this time start to lower your chest down towards your knees. Take one more full cycle of breath. And then together, let's inhale and use the exhale to bring your torso back up. Release your fingers from behind your back, arms out into that T position, arms come down, and then plant your right foot on the ground so that your right knee points up towards the ceiling, arms out, and then inhale, arms sweep up, lower your left hand down to the ground, fingertips point towards the back of the room, and then bend your right elbow, right elbow comes outside of your right knee, and twist open towards the left side of the room. Using your inhale, to lengthen up through your torso and the exhale to revolve your right ribs over to the left. Take one more cycle of breath. And then rotate your chest back towards the center, arms out in that T position, and arms come down, and switch the cross of your knees. So this time you want your left knee on top of your right knee. Bring your heels in towards your hips. And just like before, inhale, and exhale, start to walk your hands forward, bringing your chest down towards your knees. And you can either have your arms extended straight with no bend in the elbows, or you can bend your elbows, lower your forearms down to the ground. And then walk your hands back in towards your knees. Let's turn this into a full Gomukhasana. Arms come out into a T position. This time as you inhale, lift your right arm up, bend your right elbow, right hand comes to your upper back, sweep your left arm down and around, and then either interlace your fingers or just grab on to opposite ends of your shirt. Your right hand pulls your shirt up, your left hand pulls your shirt down. Hug your left elbow in towards your head. Inhale to lift up through your torso and exhale, start to lower your torso down towards your knees. And then inhale to lift your torso up. Release the interlace of your fingers or just release your fingers from your shirt. Arms come back out into a T position and then fingers float down and rest onto the mat. 
Let's turn this into a Marichyasana twist. So flatten your left foot on the ground. Your left foot is right outside of your right knee. And then inhale, sweep your arms up. Rotate towards the right side of the room. Right hand comes down, presses into the ground and back of you. Fingertips point towards the back. And then bend your left elbow. Left elbow comes outside of your left knee and you're twisting over to the right side of the room. Few cycles of breath. Inhale, lifting up through the crown of your head and exhale, drawing your left ribs over to the right. Take another inhale. And as you exhale, bring your torso back to the center, arms out into that T position, fingertips come down, and just come back into a Sukhasana, an easeful position, one shin in front of the other. Hands on top of your knees, palms face up. Let your eyes close. So as we've open the practice and begin to open up our hips. You've had some time to marinate in this question. What opening do you aspire to create in your mind, body, and soul? There's no right or wrong answer. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. Feel that answer in as your kavana, as your intention for this practice. Inhale and exhale. Let your eyes open and let's come into cat and cow. Come into a tabletop position. Shoulders stacked directly above your wrists. Fan your fingers out, index fingers point towards the top of the mat. Your spine is in its neutral position. Rotate the eyes of your elbows, the inside of your elbows towards the front of the room. That's gonna turn your arms on. And then inhale, lift your heart and chest up, lift your tush up, arch your back into a cow position and exhale into cat, round your back, draw your belly into your chest. Inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Inhale into cow, and exhale into cat. Come back to a tabletop position, Inhale, stretch your right leg back, lower onto your right toes, press your right heel towards the back of the room. Let's take a couple cycles of breath like this. Keep your gaze down on the ground, a couple of inches in front of your hands. And you're lengthening that right leg towards the back of the room. And now we're going to add the element of balance. Inhale, lift your right leg up so that it's parallel with your hips. And pause. And then inhale, reach your left arm forward, left palm turning into the midline. Engage your core. Draw your belly into your chest. Take two more cycles of breath. Inhale. And exhale. And inhale. And exhale, lower your left hand. Bend your right knee, right knee parallel to your left knee. 
Inhale, reach your left leg back, come onto your left toes, press your left heel towards the back of the room to really turn on the length of your left leg. And just like on the previous side, your gaze is down towards the ground, a couple of inches in front of your mat. And now adding on the element of balance and reminder in this yoga studio and any yoga studio, you decide when you've reached your limit. It's good to be in the zone of heat and challenge, but never in the zone of pain. So lift your left leg so that it's parallel to the ground. Engage your core to bring some stability to your body and then extend your right arm towards the front of the room. We're going to be here for a few cycles of breath. Take another inhale and exhale, lower your right hand, bend your left knee, lower your left knee. And now taking a frog pose, it's good to have your blocks. I'm turning to face you so that you can see how I'm gonna come into this pose. Widen your knees beyond hips distance to start. And then I'm gonna lower my forearms onto the blocks and spread my knees further and further apart. And I'm gonna shift my hips back towards my heels. We'll be here for a few cycles of breath. Opening up both hips at once, stretching the groin. One of my favorite yoga teachers was always so good about distinguishing between those two. You open your hips and you stretch your groin. Take one more inhale. And exhale, you can come off of your blocks press your palms into the ground, bring your knees back to hip width apart. You can put your blocks at the front of the mat and then draw your big toes together, widen your knees and sit your hips back, come into balasana with a B as a boy, child's pose. Lower your forehead onto the ground, Lower your forearms onto the ground. And hear the sound of the breath in your body. As many of you know, Open Temple is right in Venice Beach, California. So we have the privilege of hearing the sound of the waves at times, but you can create that sound through your yoga practice. So listen to the inhale in your throat and the exhale, and you might hear the sound of waves crashing on the sand. And now start to walk your hands forward to straighten your arms, your elbows lift off the ground. Shift your torso forward as you tuck your toes and then lift your knees up, shift your hips all the way up and back. 
and find yourself in your first Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. And those of you that have any sort of tightness in your wrists, you can lift up onto the blocks. That's a way to make Adho Mukha Svanasana more accessible. And now we're gonna do an Anjane Asana series, a series of low lunges with variations. Inhale, lift your right leg up and back. Exhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward between your hands. Lower your left knee onto the ground. Untuck your left toes. And throughout this practice, you can continue to use your blocks or for a deeper stretch, keep your blocks off to the side, but know that the blocks are always there. You decide. And pressing forward through your right knee towards the front of the room. Inhale. And exhale. Two more cycles of breath, inhale, and exhale. One more inhale, and exhale. Tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, plant your palms into the ground, step your right leg back into plank position. You can always modify plank by having your knees on the ground. And then you decide you can either take the vinyasa or meet directly back in Adho Mukha Svanasana. If you're taking the vinyasa, you're shifting your torso forward, bending your elbows, lowering halfway down, flip over your toes into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana, upward facing dog, and then tuck your toes Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Second side, inhale, lift your left leg up in the air. Draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee. Untuck your right toes. And you're in that low lunge, this time on the left side of your body. Inhale. And exhale. Two more cycles of breath. Let's do the last one together. Inhale through your nose. And exhale out your mouth. Flatten your palms. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back, plank position, and either take that vinyasa or meet directly in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Bend your knees, lower your knees onto the ground, untuck your toes, bring your big toes to touch, and shift your hips back into Balasana, child's pose. We're stopping to rest while also opening up our hips between each one of these Anjane Asana low lunge sequences. One more cycle of breath. And then passing through tabletop, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back. Adho Mukha Svanasana. Draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward. Lower your left knee. Untuck your left toes. And here you are back in Anjane Asana. In this low lunge pose. And this time, press your left hand into the ground. Bend your left knee. Lift your left shin up. Heel comes towards your tush and then swing your right hand up and back. Grab onto your 
left ankle, hug your left ankle in towards your tush. And this is a low lunge with a quad stretch. Let's take two more cycles of breath. And then slowly, don't let it crash down. Release your left ankle, bring your left shin back down. And now keep your left hand rooted into the mat and swing your right arm up, coming into a twist. If you want to deepen the intensity of the stretch, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, straighten your left leg, press back through your left heel, and stack your right shoulder on top of your left shoulder. Twisting your body open to the right. Two more cycles of breath. Take another inhale. Exhale, lowering your right hand to frame your front foot. And then step, if your left knee is on the ground, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, step your right leg back, and you decide, take the vinyasa, or come directly into Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward, lower onto your right knee. Untuck your right toes. Plant your right hand into the ground. Bend your right knee, lift your right heel up towards your tush. And then swing your left arm up and back around. Grab onto your right ankle, draw your right ankle and heel in towards your tush for this low lunge with a quad stretch. Taking a few cycles of breath. And in a moment, you're going to release the hold on your right ankle and slowly lower your right shin down towards the ground. And with your right hand rooted into the mat, twist open to the left, raise your left arm up towards the ceiling, and turning this into a low lunge with a twist. To deepen the intensity of the stretch, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, straighten your right leg, press back through your right heel to the back of the room, and stack your left shoulder on top of your right shoulder. Two more cycles of breath. And with your next exhale, lower your left hand to the mat. If your right knee is on the mat, tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up. Step your left leg back, you're in plank position. Take the vinyasa, or you can meet in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then bend your knees, lower them onto the mat, bring your big toes to touch, shift your hips back on your heels, and lower your forehead down as we come into Balasana. And coming into Balasana could be an opportunity for Svadhyaya, for that self-reflection. What are one or two obstacles 
that get in your way when you're trying to create that opening for yourself. In our physical practice of yoga, it might be a limitation or an injury or the reality of how parts of our body just don't have the flexibility that leads us to look like the images in the magazines, which is totally fine. That's why we're using our blocks and our straps as a great example of how to remove some of the obstacles that sustain our Mitzrayim. We are trying to leave the Mitzrayim, leave the space of narrowness. Walk your hands forward, elbows lift up, tuck your toes, coming back into Adho Mukha Shvanasa. We're gonna do one more of these Anjane Asana sequences. Inhale, draw your right knee into your chest. Step your right foot forward, lower your left knee onto the ground, and take your right hand and place it inside your right foot. And you can use your blocks or not, you decide. I'll demonstrate it with the blocks. Lower your forearms onto the blocks and come into a modified version of lizard pose. This is a tremendous hip opener. So I'm doing it right now with my forearms on the blocks. Another option is to press your hands into the ground with or without the blocks. That's an even lighter version. Lighter translates to more accessible. And then there's the deepest version, which is without your blocks, lower your forearms onto the ground. And even though I said this might be the deepest version, we can go even a little bit deeper. As Emeril Lagasse say, says, kick it up a notch. So if you want to kick it up a notch, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up. And now roll on to the outer part of your right foot and let your right knee open up towards the right side of the room. Emphasizing the opening in your right hip. Take two more cycles of breath. Flatten your right foot. If your forearms are on the ground or on blocks, press your palms back down into the ground or your blocks. And then if your left knee is up, lower your left knee down, untuck your left toes again, and shift your left knee back a couple of inches. Take your blocks by both sides of your body so that they're there and ready for you should you want to use them. And we're going to come into Hanumanasana, the yoga version of these spread legs. So straighten your right leg, come on to your right heel, lift your right toes up. This is the yoga version of splits. And if you're very tight here, you can use your blocks, put your hands on your blocks. And you can either have your blocks close to your right foot or closer to where your hips are and place them on the highest height and you can lift your torso up. So experiment. You want to feel the opening in your right hip, the stretching of your right groin, but balance that with a little bit of relief. 
There's a saying in yoga that we are trying to find that balance between effort and ease. Take one more cycle of breath. And then bend your right knee, flatten your right foot. If your hands are up on the blocks, put the blocks off to the side, tuck your left toes, lift your left knee up, press your left heel back, press your palms into the mat and step your right leg back. You're in that plank position. Take the vinyasa or meet directly in Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Breathing in and out and second side. Inhale, draw your left knee into your chest. Step your left foot forward. Lower your right knee onto the ground. You can untuck your right toes and then bring your left hand inside your left foot and we're coming back into that lizard pose and you decide, you can either stay right here with both hands pressing into the mat. That's option number one. Option number two, use your blocks or books and lower your forearms down onto your blocks or books. And then option number three is to do that without your blocks or books forearms directly onto the ground. And if you'd like to deepen this even more, tuck your right toes and lift your right knee up. Keep your gaze on the ground. And then roll onto the outer part of your left foot and let your left knee roll open towards the left side of the room. Couple more cycles of breath. Flatten your left foot. Press back up onto your hands if your forearms are down in any way, shape, or form. And then if your right leg is extended straight, bend your right knee, lower your right knee onto the ground, and untuck your right toes again. And coming into Hanumanasana, the yoga version of splits, you're going to start to straighten your left leg, coming onto your left heel. You can walk that left heel forward to help straighten your left leg. Toes point up towards the ceiling. And if you are a flexible all-star, you can come into the full splits. Otherwise, you can keep your hands on the ground. You can put your hands on blocks with the blocks close to your left foot or you can walk the blocks in so that they're closer to your hips and maybe come on the highest height of the blocks and lift your torso up. It's always the version of the pose that I seem to get the most out of. So that's where I'm gonna hang out. Keeping your hips centered towards the front of the mat, top of the mat. One more cycle of breath. And then remove the blocks, bend your left knee. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee up, step your left leg back in plank position, and lower your knees onto the ground, bring your big toes to touch, shift your hips back. One more time in Balasana, in child's pose. 
taking just a moment and then passing through tabletop, tuck your toes, shift your hips up and back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, and walk your hands in towards your feet and find yourselves in Uttanasana, in a forward fold. Hands on your hips, bring your elbows in towards each other, keeping your gaze on the ground, inhale to straighten up, and then walk to the front of your mat. And we're in Tadasana. So Kola Kavod, excellent job so far. We've been practicing for quite a while and you haven't even stood up until this point. Take a few cycles of breath in your Tadasana, in your mountain pose. And we're gonna take one half sun salutation as kind of like a palate cleanser. Inhale, arms float up, Uttita Hastasana. Exhale, folding forward into Uttanasana. Inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, lowering down into Uttanasana. Inhale, Root your feet into the ground, rise up, arms up, Uttita Hastasana, and exhale, arms down in Tadasana. So at the very start of the practice, we did a Supta Padangustasana, a reclined extended uh, leg toe, leg pose with your hand towards your toe. Now we're gonna do it standing up as a forward fold. So step your feet hip widths apart, Hands on your hips, inhale, lift your heart and chest up and exhale, start to fold forward. Take your second and third finger, use it as a hook to grab onto your big toes. Release the crown of your head down towards the ground. And then you can have a slight bend in your knees, bend your elbows out to either side of the room and draw your chest towards your thighs. This is Padangustasana. Extended hand to toe pose. You can start to straighten your legs. One more cycle of breath. And then release the hook of your big toes, hands back up onto your hips. Keep your gaze down as you lift your torso up. And you're back in Tadasana. Step your feet three to four feet apart, toes angle in, heels angle out, prasarita padatanasana, wide-legged forward fold, hands on your hips, elbows towards the back of the room, inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head, and as you exhale, hinge at your hips, folding forward. When your torso is halfway down, Release your hands from your hips. Fingertips come onto the ground. Working your hands towards flat, which might mean widening your stance. And then lower the crown of your head down. Prasarita Padottanasana A. Another hip opener.
hands come back up onto your hips and inhale, lift your torso up and step your feet together. Great job. We have just a couple more poses before we get to our peak pose. We're gonna do a rather quick Vrikshasana tree pose. Shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. Draw your left knee into your chest. Take your left hand on your left knee. Draw your left knee out to the left side of the room. Use your left hand, grab onto your left ankle and press the sole of your left foot into the inner part of your right thigh and press your palms together in the center of your chest. And the trick here in this Vrikshasana is you wanna keep your hips centered towards the front of the room while opening up that left knee towards the left side of the room. That's what creates the opening in your hip. And as always, feel free to modify with your foot on your shin or your toes on the ground and your heel pressing directly above your ankle. So you're taking the version of the pose that serves you well. You can extend your arms up into a full expression of Vrikshasana. One more cycle of breath. And exhale, lower your hands back to your hips left knee back into your center and step your left foot down. No rest for the weary. Second side, shift the weight of your body onto your left foot, draw your right knee in and same thing, right hand on your right knee, open up your right knee to the right side of the room, right hand on right ankle, press your right foot into the inner part of your left thigh, press your palms together, Center your hips while opening that right knee towards the right side of the room. Pause to find your sense of stability and then extend your arms like branches of a tree. And then arms come down. Knee back into your center and step your foot down. Pause for a moment. What I'd like you to do in the spirit of creating an opening and in honor of Passover, one thing we did not do in last week's practice was to do something to symbolize the welcoming of Elijah into our yoga space. So look around your home yoga studio and I want you to find something to open, something to bring light or air into your space. You can open up a window, a door. Uh, the term for turning a light on in Hebrew is leaf toach. You don't say to turn on, you say to open up a light. So you can create an opening by simply turning a light on, opening the light in your studio. I'm gonna open up a window. And then come back to your mat. So why the symbolism? There is a part of this holiday of the transition into spring in contemplating liberation and freedom that certainly is about the opening we are creating for ourselves and the opening that we are creating for others, the help that we are going to give to other people. That's a big part of why we practice on this space so that ultimately we can be outward facing. So we are gonna come into a standing figure four, but with help, with support. So take your folding chair and place it in the center of your mat and take a seat. Sit towards the edge of your chair and Bend your right knee 
stack your right ankle on top of your left knee. This is very similar to that fit, uh, figure four, the thread the needle we did on our backs at the start of the practice. It's the same alignment of your legs. Inhale to lift up through your torso and exhale, start to fold forward. And you might feel that opening in the right side of your hip. For those of you that work or spend a lot of time sitting at a desk, this is also just a wonderful way in the middle of your work day to take a stretch. So we use these props as a way to welcome in help and assistance into our practice. As a reminder that we need to accept help and provide help off the mat. Take another inhale and exhale, lift your torso up, remove your right ankle from your left knee and second side. Stack your left ankle on top of your right knee. Inhale, lifting up through the crown of your head and exhale, folding your torso down towards your left shin. This time observing the opening in your left hip. Inhale, come up, and we're gonna do it again. You have two options. Option number one is to stick with the chair. Option number two is to come off the chair and take the more traditional version of the pose. If you're repeating it in the chair, repeat what we just did. If you're standing up, you're gonna shift the weight of your body onto your right foot. You're gonna lift your left knee up and you're gonna rotate your shin towards the right side of the room, your foot towards the right side of the room. Stack your left foot, your left ankle on top of your right knee. And then sit back, press your palms together in the center of your chest and shift your hips back to simulate the sitting down into that chair going to hold it for a few cycles of breath. And then inhale to stand up. Step your foot down, release your hands and second side. And if you're sitting in the chair, please shift to the second side of your body. So if you're standing, shift the weight of your body onto your left foot, draw your right knee into your chest, rotate your right foot towards the left side of the room, stack your left ankle on top, excuse me, your right ankle on top of your left knee, press your palms together in the center of your chest and start to shift your hips back. Joining our friends in the yoga studio who are sitting in the chair, but we're squatting into a chair-like position. And everyone take one more inhale and exhale, straighten up and step your foot back down. If you're sitting in the chair, stand up and place the chair angled towards the right side of the room so that it's right there for you. Grab onto your strap or rope. It is time for our peak pose. We've already done it twice in different forms of alignment. It is Padangustasana, this extended hand to leg pose. 
but this time it's utita hasta padam gustasana, a standing extended leg pose, hand to uh, big toe pose. So shift the weight of your body onto your left foot. You're holding onto your strap. Loop the strap over the ball of your right leg and extend your right leg straight. Remember, we did this at the start of the practice on our backs. Take both ends of the strap into your right hand and start to open up your right leg towards the right side of the room. And here's where we accept that help. Just press, just, excuse me, lower your right heel onto that chair. Pull the strap in towards your body, center your hips towards the front of the room. And this is such a wonderful way with the help of a prop to come into Utita Hasta Padan Gustasana. Take a couple cycles of breath. To me, this is such a great yoga example of what it means to open up a window, open up a door, turn a light on, use a prop to offer assistance in this journey to freedom. One more inhale. And as you exhale, lift that heel up. Draw your leg back towards the center, bend your right knee, remove the strap and step your right foot down and switch the chair to the other side. Doing great. Shift the weight of your body this time onto your right foot. Loop the strap around the ball of your left foot. Extend your left leg straight. Take both ends of the strap into your left hand. You know where we're going. Open up your left leg towards the left side of the room and then lower your left heel onto the chair. You can put your right hand on your right hip and you don't want your hips to veer off to the left side of the room. So rotate them to the center to face front. Couple cycles of breath. So anytime in this yoga studio or another one where we're doing Utita Hasta Parangustasana, you can have the chair as your prop, as your opening. One more inhale and exhale, lift your heel up, leg back towards the center, bend your left knee, remove the strap and step your left foot down. Great job. Put the chair towards the top of your mat. We're gonna start our cool down. Done a great job. Time to sit down, legs out straight. Let's take a Paschimottanasana, a seated forward fold together. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, folding forward, hands on your shins, your ankles or your feet. You can use your strap if you'd like to. We're gonna take just a few cycles of breath. And with your next exhale, release your hands. And now bring your folding chair onto your mat. It's gonna be a restorative Shavasana. It's a little redundant because Shavasana is already restorative. 
So you have two options, actually. Option number one is to just take a traditional Shavasana with your uh, back on the ground, legs extended out in front of you, ankles rolling open. The other option, if you'd like to make good use of the chair, lay down on your back, bend your knees, place your shins on the chair. You can slip your feet uh, in back of the backrest and then arms alongside your torso, palms facing up. Take a giant inhale and exhale. Whichever version of Shavasana that you've chosen, let your eyes close. and work towards a sense of stillness, not just in your body, but also in your mind. Start to wiggle your fingers and wiggle your toes. And if you were using the chair, lift your shins off the chair and push the chair off to the side and come up into a seated position. If you are in a traditional Shavasana, draw your knees into your chest, roll over to the right side of your body and then push yourself up into a seated position. We're meeting in Sukhasana. Hands on your knees, palms facing up. So, one of the interesting thoughts that some of the scholars and rabbis and amazing people who give thought to this holiday of Passover acknowledge is that in an interesting way, to a small degree, sometimes there can be a little bit of comfort in slavery, in that there's familiarity, there's routine, and you don't carry the burden of making these independent decisions. And part of our challenge on Passover is to push ourselves out of that comfort and into this expansive space, the space of unknown. And I wanna to return to the words, the teachings of Leslie Koppelman Ross around Passover. And she writes, Passover with its message of hope tells us that like the Egyptian slaves, we can escape from our straits. As Rabbi Nachman of Breslov counseled, when you are about to leave Mitzrayim, you should not worry about how you will manage in a new place. Anyone who does or who stops to get everything in order for the journey 
will never pick herself up and go. Press your palms together in the center of your chest. And I wanna come back to that opening question. What opening do you aspire to create in your mind, body, and spirit? Inhale. And exhale. Lower your chin to your chest. Final Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom. Namaste. Thank you so much for being here.